and then it said this being is being recorded. So um, when it says three participants, does that mean there's two people just already waiting? Okay, and they probably just heard me when I just said that. <laughs> Uh, no, that's fine. All right, so we are in, we are all set. Right, that'll be perfect. Um, yeah, I don't think we have anyone. I see that there's people already jumping in and uh, that's awesome. I love people that are early, uh, but we will get started at uh, right around five o'clock. Um, I know your time is important. So right around five o'clock, I will get us started here and Mr. Blau will be in at that point too.
Hello, Mr. Balawa. You're, you're, you're muted. You're muted, buddy. You went with the suit and tie. Look at you. Well, and we also have 10 other people listening to us, just FYI. <laughs> oh, I thought you, well, you're looking good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I figured if I was staying here in the office, I would try. Um, but uh, I told them that we will wait until about 5 o'clock, that we appreciate anyone coming early, and that uh, we will be able to kind of uh, go from there. Sounds great. I have your thing ready. And uh, I was trying to get another thing ready here. The numbers are climbing quickly. They are. We love it. It's awesome. I know. Well, to the people who are there, I'm going to probably have to apologize ahead of time because my two oldest boys will be coming in the front door very shortly. <laughs> and they don't know I'm on this meeting. So. <laughs> Oh, that's what live video is supposed to be for. Uh, I'm going to go get myself some water. Twenty three. Very good. And the newsletter so far just hit three hundred and twelve, the most I have ever had to our newsletter. So this That's awesome. could be a positive sign that we have we have parents and families that are looking for information and it could be that wish we had more information to give them right right but i'll tell you it's great that you have all those interesting interested parents because we are looking for pto members right <laughs> that is correct <laughs> yes thought i'd give a little plug right there oh know? that was good that was very good so as as we said to those parents that have jumped in early here, we will wait till right around five o'clock and then we will get ourselves going. We appreciate everyone making it at this time. We had to select a time that worked with the other four schools. And uh, so we got pushed to an earlier, I think I first selected this as like 6.30 on tonight and then it got pushed to five o'clock to make available for every other school and technology department and then the full remote um, presentation that it went that is going tomorrow night, the night before the opening of school. But uh, definitely. In, in what's later tonight? Is it tech? Technology is later tonight. See a lot of familiar names, fourth grade to fifth grade, former Yellians who have younger siblings. I see parents who I know I had their older children as a when I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even looking and now I am.
50, top 50. Keeps building. And I will repeat what Mr. Gagan just said for those of you just logging on. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes to make sure, you know, maybe a little, you know, five or a little after five so we can get everyone on and uh, who wants to be here. I know five o'clock is a tough time, but he just said that um, to get all the other meetings in, that this was the time that was given to us. And then um, there is another meeting tonight, the technology meeting. But numbers are quickly rising as I speak. <laughs> We went down for a second, then went back up. I don't know if you saw that. No. <laughs> The one, okay, we'll just wait just a couple of minutes just to make sure that everyone can get in and uh, that we're able to get here on this beautiful Monday evening, two days before this unprecedented year begins. Um, like there was a comedian that talked about how wouldn't it be awesome to be able to get back to precedented times and not be in unprecedented times for everything that we're doing it really would be nice um but uh definitely the numbers are ticking up very quickly here so we'll just give everyone a chance to get on because sometimes zoom is a little bit complicated to type in everything and get yourself in here um, so we'll, we'll give it a, just another minute or two, and then I promise we will we will begin. And uh, if at any time you need to jump out, uh, this is going to be recorded, as you're probably figuring out every time you or once you log in that it's being recorded, and that uh, that way we can share it uh, tomorrow with the district in case anybody wasn't able to make it. And uh, most of tonight is going to be kind of answering um, kit, answering questions um, like the one that just popped in there. And we will certainly answer all those um, questions as we go along. But that is definitely, thank you, Ms. Luyo, um, that if you have any questions, um, we, will, we will be able to go through all of these questions tonight. Um, or at least we're hoping. I mean, that's the whole, whole idea of this is uh, hoping to answer everyone's questions. Um, and if not, we will be able to get back to you in some way, shape or form uh, in an email or in a uh, 
as Mrs. O'Neill's been doing for the district, kind of uh, get, grab the questions today and then be able to write up answers and get them to everybody that was here today. Um, so we'll, we will do that. But um, just gonna wait just another couple minutes and I promise we'll get started here at 5.05 um, with our really, really short presentation by us and then most of the time we're gonna try to leave for questions that you may have or someone may have and it might help answer a question or even bring up another question. That is something that has definitely occurred in the last two months is that one question leads us to an answer which leads us to four more questions when we thought we had, a, we had an answer. And it, it has been just that way for both Mr. Balawa and me to be able to kind of navigate through all this. Um, so, so we can kind of go through there. Yeah, I, and, I, and I see all the questions popping up, but we, we're gonna wait until um, we present and then wait till we get started just to make sure we don't, I don't wanna take up anyone's valuable time and start answering questions two, three times. But so far, every question that's up there, the answer is yes. So, mm -hmm. um, but, but we'll talk about it more in detail. Um, that way we don't have to, uh, like I said, um, waste people time and, um, um, but I'll make sure that every question up there is answered. And if we don't have the answer, we will get you the answer. So, Mr. Blau, it is 5.05, so why don't we make this our official beginning. So, okay. um, I want to welcome everyone to our Yale virtual open house Q&A. Um, I'm Marty Gagan, and I am the principal of the L, and this is the start of my third year here at the L. I've been a principal uh, for middle schools for 11 years, and prior to that, I was a high school assistant principal, and prior to that, I was a, a high school English teacher and middle school English teacher, computer teacher, and uh, worked my way here to the Yale, and I love every second of it. Even this, even these days uh, of such uh, uh, kind of confusing times of when we're trying to figure everything out. And uh, I just wanna say that uh, it, it isn't for a lack of trying that you might not have information right now. It really is that each day we are figuring something new out and we're trying to get that information to you as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And I cannot say enough how much I thank you for your patience and your kindness uh, that almost every email I receive, almost every phone message I've received, it's been, uh, we really appreciate everything that the schools are doing. Um, and uh, please get back to me as soon as you can, but we understand that you're busy. And I, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that uh, because these have been crazy times, but we have been trying our best to answer questions and then sometimes I know Mr. Balawa and I both don't really like to answer a question with the idea that it could the answer might change <laughs> the next day or a couple hours later. So we're really trying our best to make sure that we have the right answer. And uh, as Mr. Balawa and I were saying while people were waiting for the meeting to start, that uh, I tried to pick the day that was the last day uh, to, to have these meetings. And then we had to choose it uh, with the other schools. So I really appreciate everyone making the time and effort to make it here tonight at such an early time of five o'clock. It was the time slot that was kind of left uh, for us to choose. Um, but I'll first uh, turn it over to my assistant principal, Dean of Students, uh, Mr. Balawa, and I'll have him introduce him, himself and then we'll get on with the program. Sure, I am Bob Balawa. I am Dean of Students at the Yale, and I've been doing that for a few years now, but um, prior to that, I was the fourth grade teacher at the Yale, and um, prior to that, I was a third grade teacher at JCS, so I have been in the Norton District since 1998, and actually, if, if uh, you want to count my pre-practicum and practicum student teaching experience, all the way back to 1996, so... 
Um, I'm giving you an idea of how old I am, but you know, age is only a number, right? And, and as Mr. Gagan said, you know, we are trying our best to give you all the answers that we have. And, and even today was an example of, we were trying to just you know, nail down certain things that were gonna happen throughout the day. And then I talked to a staff member and they said, yeah, but what about this? And okay, all right, so we have to change what we want to do because what we, we want to make sure that um, safety is the number one priority. And you know, after that, you know, we, we want to make sure that you know we the social emotional aspect is taken care of, the academics. So we want to make sure that we give you the best possible product that we possibly can. And again, I apologize for not having all the answers, and we will try to have them all tonight. And if we don't, we will get you the answers, whether you um, email us, call us, we will get you the answers, or they might even be found in a newsletter or a Q&A like Mr. Gagan mentioned. Thank you, Mr. Blau. Yeah, um, so I was saying also before the five o'clock start that uh, I try to put out a newsletter every single week, and in the newsletter it has has information from the past week and uh, some news that's coming up for events that might be coming up soon. And uh, this past week, we had more hits on the newsletter than I've ever had before. So I know that you are all kind of dying for information and wanting of information. And I try to get information out to you as much as I can and uh, so for you to be able to be knowledgeable parents and be able to kind of know what's happening. And just these last couple weeks and actually back into July, everything was just kind of changing. There were times when we thought we knew what we were doing and then all of a sudden uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education might have changed their mind on us or, or the guidance went, went a little bit differently and the protocols were a little bit different. So we have been trying to work within those guidelines to make sure that our school is as safe as it can be for your kids and it's what we care most about. Um, something that you're going to hear from me and from Mr. Balawa and from their teachers, from your children's teachers, is that we care so much about your kids. Uh, we, we are here for them. We want to be here for them. And that is the big reason why I think we're starting up on Wednesday is because we all want to be here and make sure that we can be in person in some way, shape or form for your kids. And that's something that we have worked very hard. Uh, the last couple of weeks, all of the teachers here have been doing, uh, teachers and faculty have been doing some professional development to make sure that uh, we, we have the best ideas of what we should do with your kids when they're here and when they are working from home remotely. And that has been a big push and something that we have done. Now, I am sure some of your kids might say, oh, I kind of know what remote learning is like because we did it from March through June, whether at JCS and LGM when they were in third grade or whether they were here at the L for fourth grade. But that was emergency distant learning. And it was something that we just kind of taped together uh, on the fly to try to make the best of a hard situation. And this is going to be much different. Um, we are still going to make sure that the students are cared for and that their social emotional learning is number one in our mind. But we also know that the academics are super important as well. And it's going to be a lot different than what it was in March. And I know it's been Mr. Balau and I just talked about before he left the office uh, just a couple hours ago that, uh, that it's been six months since they've really been in a classroom. So we are definitely making things different. Um, and it is going to be wholeheartedly different than what it was last year and then certainly what it was before whether they were here as fourth graders or whether they were at JCS and LGN. It is going to look different, feel different. And, uh, and we're, we're prepared to make sure that they can be as safe as they can be. Uh, the days, as you know, cohort one is Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, 
Uh, we tried to work with parents as best as humanly possible to try to fit them into a cohort that worked well with their family or worked well with uh, the people that they are driving with or being with so that we could kind of make everyone in the safest spot as can be. But uh, Tuesday and Thursday is, is cohort one and then Wednesday and Friday are cohort two, which makes it kind of weird that uh, the first day of school for cohort one is going to be distant learning from home. And then for cohort, cohort two, that would be in person. And if you haven't picked up your Chromebook yet and that you're in cohort one, we have them here in the main office. So you can come by and pick up your Chromebook. And uh, all of our teachers have started to send out some emails to the kids to, uh, to their Google Classroom and like linking them up and introducing them to it. And uh, again, as Mr. Bilal has said at the start of this evening, that if there are things that we say that you might have some questions about, you can put them in the question box. And if there are things that you say, well, I don't know if my son or daughter got that email yet, just shoot us an email or put it in the question and we will try to make sure that we get into individual people's questions, individual student questions, either with an email later tomorrow or, or we can kind of help out with that. Uh, because these, these are really different times. We would normally be doing this in person, in the, uh, in the gym where you would be meeting Mr. Balau and me, we would do a, like a little introduction like this, and then we would be handing you off to your homeroom teachers, where they would bring you down to their classrooms on fourth grade and show you the two hallways, which the students would have already been introduced to because they would have come from JCS and LGN in May and June to kind of see the school and know the school, but it's different now. And now they're going to basically go into their classroom be in there with half the number of students that they would normally see. The class sizes are between 22 and 23, and you cut that in half, it's between about 10 to 13 students in, in each class each day. And, uh, and so we have all the desks spaced appropriately, six feet apart. They will all be cleaned. If, you, if you're on a class with one homeroom teacher and the homeroom teacher teaches everything, then that one homeroom teacher will be with your child pretty much all day, except when they go to specials or lunch or recess. And then the, if you all of a sudden have a class that's kind of a split class, team talk kind of class, we have the uh, teacher that teaches English language arts and social studies, reading and writing. And then there's the teacher that teaches math and science. And uh, typically they are right across the hall, but what's gonna end up happening is the teacher is going to travel inside the class and the kids are gonna stay at the same desks and be at the same desks. Um, I know this is a question that came up, but uh, in order for me to describe like what the day might look like, so the kids would come off the bus or be dropped off, they come into the classroom, we'd point them down the hallway that they were going to head to, get them to their class, and then they would be in that class for say their English language arts or their math and science, and then they would end up switching, the teachers would switch in. They might at this point have a math break where we know that they've gone for maybe an hour, hour or so, and they need a math break and they need a snack. We're going to have a spot brought where the kids would come and while the weather is, a, is kind of accommodating to us, we will do the mass break and snack outside uh, with certain classes at different times. And then the classes would take their mass break and snack and then come back to the classroom for more learning. And then at lunchtime, they would come down to the cafeteria where again, we have all the tables spaced out at least six feet apart. I think they're, right now, Mr. Blau and I were in the cafeteria and it's about seven and a half feet to eight feet apart uh, that the desks are set up for the cafeteria. The kids would eat lunch there in the cafeteria and then they're gonna go outside for recess, which will be another kind of mass break time 
And, and again, this is gonna be different than it's ever been where the kids are gonna be still six feet apart and uh, get some nice fresh air, run around, enjoy themselves, and then come back in for, again, more academics and to finish the day. Um, and, and that would be the in-person day. The days at their home for distance learning would be where teachers might be telling them what they're gonna do, having some video for them to watch, and then having them work on certain things to practice what they learned the day before, and then, uh, and then come in the next day with some of the work done. We have online programs that we take advantage of. Uh, we have Freckle for both ELA and math. We have Reflex, we have ST Math. We have some awesome programs that we're going to walk your children through for the first few days and then be able to send them on their own to do it. During the first few days of school, all the things I described are probably gonna be more about getting to know you and more about getting, getting your, your child back into school mode and being able to practice and do the things that we know that they can do, but it's been a while. It's been a while for all of us to, to do so. So we'll, we'll be back doing that. Um, and uh, that is kind of the overall. Mr. Blaua, anything you wanna add or? No, you, you touched on everything. I, I, I mean, um, you know, looking at it, you know some of the questions and and you you talked about masks break mask breaks and the teachers are going to give the kids every opportunity to try to go outside and but i just want you to be assured too that if the weather if there's inclement weather you know we all already have a plan for mask breaks that the kids can go into the cafeteria to take them and we have a scheduled time for the classes to go in so fourth grade classes would go well i have we have them split up in half, but they would go in, they could take their mask break, and then um, the other fourth grade class, the other half would go in as fourth graders, and then everything would be sanitized. Then fifth grade would go in, they would have a mask break, half, half the group, then the other half would come and sit in different seats, everything would be sanitized. Then it would be lunchtime, fourth grade would have um, their lunch, everything is sanitized again. And then fifth grade would have lunch, and then everything would be sanitized again. So we have these plans in place and, 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 and safety is our number one concern. So I know you mentioned the mask breaks, but I just wanted to add that if they can't go outside and, and, and I think you did mention the cafeteria, but everything will be clean before someone else will sit in a seat um, that someone prior um, was there. So we'll make sure that, that everything will be taken care of. Um, you know, in terms of the day, you know, I, I don't know, you want to put up that that um, arrival and dismissal because we can s show how the day is going to start um, okay. because, thank you, arrivals um, and dismissals are going to look a little bit different. So if you are a parent of a, of a fifth grader it, and, and you um, dropped off last year, it will be different from last year or you have someone who was in the Yale school, things will be a little bit different. Um, you really wouldn't notice it in the morning um, when uh, the, the kids get dropped off. They are still going to be dropped off in the front of the school at the gym door. And um, the only, the, the change, okay, the change would be that, um, uh, fourth and fifth graders will be get dropped off at the gym door. Fifth graders will go in that door, okay? And then fourth graders, they're going to follow that sidewalk that's pictured on the left, and they're actually going to go into the, the, the main office door. It says principal's office, and fourth grade is going to go in that door. And the reason we switched it is because we wanted to make sure that um, the fifth grade and the fourth grade, when they go in, uh, to the school that they are not crossing paths. We want to make sure that um, the kids are maintaining social distancing as much at all times. And so we want to make sure that we give give the kids, you know, the opportunity to do that without crossing paths. So fifth grade will go in that door. Fourth grade will go in the main office. And I, please, I don't want anyone 
you know, any kids, if they're listening to feel nervous about it, uh oh, I don't know what I'm doing the first day. It is all hands on deck for us the first day of school. Um, so we will have a, a plethora of adults everywhere making sure that kids go where they need to go. So, so that is not going to be a problem. We have, station, we have extra adults stationed outside to make sure things run smoothly also. So we will be prepared. Um, for and, hopefully and Mr. Blau, I just think a uh, bunch of questions I was answering at, at late August, the last couple of weeks are what time is drop off and parent drop off, as you said, is 810 to 825. And uh, we certainly will understand that those first few days are going to be new to everybody. So when we when we say 825, if all of a sudden your car is in line and it's 825, we mm -hmm. certainly do understand that things are running a little bit late, things like that. But we ask we ask parents uh, and families to start lining up at around 810. Now some parents get there at around 8 o'clock because they've got a book to their own work. And we certainly understand that, that they can start parking and being in line, and then they will be the first ones to kind of drop off. But uh, we get, we move it quickly and, and we'll get it done. And as Mr. Balawa said, uh, that any fourth grader that's a little bit nervous about this, not to worry, We're, this is new, this is new to us. We are doing things a little bit differently than we've ever done before. So it's all brand new to everybody. So it's no need to be nervous by anyone's hand. No, and please make sure when you're dropping off, you drop off in the front of the line. We have a crosswalk there, we have a stop sign, just to make sure everything is safe as possible. Um, and there's our stop sign, and that is the, the door um, that the students will be dropped off at. And then, like I said, fifth grade will enter that door, and then fourth grade will go down the sidewalk to enter the by the main office. Um, bus drop off is going to look exactly the same as it has in the past. Um, buses will go to the back of the school. Students will enter th through door fifteen. So for parents, it's not really much for you. You know, you really need to know. And even even the students, if you've been here with us, you know it's gonna, it's the same door. And even if you're new to the school, again, there'll be a plenty of adults outside showing you the way. And as soon as fourth graders and fifth graders enter the building, there'll be plenty of uh, adults there also showing the way of where we need to go. And this is where it's gonna be different. Um, so it's not a different time. Parent pickup is gonna be at 240. Um, but now we are asking parents to drive to the back of the school to pick up their children. So drop-offs in the front, pickup is going to be in the back. Um, there is a slide on the next diagram, on, on the next slide, that is this diagram of the, the traffic flow that we would like you to follow. So um, this is a, you know, a picture of the school from Google Earth, and we're asking you to, to go follow the, these one-way, the arrows. Um, again, we will have adults out there, making sure um, that everyone's going in the, the correct way. Uh, so at 240, we call for dismissals. And the kids are going to come downstairs. They're going to leave through door 15. And we were going to ask the kids to walk out to their car. And no cars will be moving at this point. Um, there'll be an adult making sure even if the first person in the car gets in, we are going to hold off until it's safe um, for the cars to move. If the, the ride is not there because the ride shows up at 250, we're just gonna have the kids um, wait outside in a socially distanced way um, for, for their ride to come. And if, if they're waiting to the side and we can let some cars through, we're gonna let, let cars go. It's just, we're, we're, we're trying to be prepared for a large number of pickups. Um, so honestly, we don't know how it's gonna look the first few days, so just bear with us. Um, as you know, if we get through the hiccups, if there are any, and you know, maybe this is something, you know, that will work for us and we can, we can stay with it. But you just have to remember that the change is the, the pickups will be in the back of the school. So they come off Mr. Blau right off 123 on that driveway, kind of past the school heading towards Wheaton, Wheaton and kind of 
as you're heading to the school, heading towards the main entrance there, it's that driveway right before you get to the school. Yeah, so, so to the, I, I see your arrow on the screen, right, the mouse's arrow, but to the right, there's construction going on. Um, and then across the way, it's, it's that, um, the, 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 it's between, like Honeydew and the Bagel Place, it's between yeah. those two um, across the street from where you'll drive in. Right. And then um, even buses, we're gonna do it, and, and, and parents who pick up and drop off, you don't really need to know about this, but I just wanted um, people to be aware, bus pickup is different too, because it's in the front, but we're also um, gonna have fourth and fifth graders um, exit two different doors because again, we don't want to have kids cross paths, fourth grade going one direction, fifth grade going in the other direction. For parent pickup, we won't have that problem because they're going to meet at that one door and there'll be adults making sure that they socially distance. Um, because it, um, if, if you look at the school, fourth grade's coming from, I'm just looking at the picture, uh, they, they will be coming from the bottom of the picture, fifth grade is coming from the top. So that, that, for for the the bus pickup we're going to have to use those two doors and um honestly it it, it when it's time for the, the buses to be picked up i, I don't know what it's going to look like tomorrow because i also do know there's a lot of construction going on so if there's one bus two buses we will get those kids on the bus as safely and as quickly as possible and then when they're loaded we will get them out um and out and, and you know we are asking that uh, you know parent pickup you know kids be picked up by 255 i understand the first few days it's going to be tough um especially being you know a new format that we're using um construction so you know we'll be definitely flexible the first few days after that when we get comfortable and the construction's over anything after 255 we would just ask the parents to go to the main office uh to pick up kids um, and, and that normally doesn't happen too often unless there's extenuating circumstances, but we just don't want to be outside with the kids. If it's 30 degrees, if it's raining, it's just easier to have the kids wait at the, the, the main office. All right. So as Mr. Palawa said, and as we both kind of emphasize, all this is new to us. Everything is new to us. Um, last year, our fourth graders kind of experienced the asbestos issue that we had with the school. So our fifth graders were actually on the fourth grade floor and we found every little nook and cranny to be able to have classes with them. Um, but now all of a sudden we're dealing with something different. And again, as Mr. Balawas emphasized, everything is for safety. Every decision that we're making is for the safety of our kids and then for their families and your families and our families and for our community to make sure that we do this right so that we continue to be in person and who knows, maybe all of a sudden this hybrid turns into full in person. Uh, that's what we're hoping, that's what we're working towards, and that's what it will, will be. And we'll be emphasizing with the kids, especially those first few days, um, proper hand washing, proper mask wearing, and uh, that the kids and everyone here in the building will be wearing their masks uh, as much as possible and having them on. And uh, it will be something that we are all getting used to. Um, but that's why we'll have the mask breaks in the morning and then the mask break when they are eating lunch and then the mask break when they go out to recess. Um, but it is something that we will be uh, emphasizing with the students and explaining why it's important. And uh, that is something that we certainly will all be doing on a daily basis. Um, I'm just gonna maybe start going through the questions, Mr. Blau. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, the school supply list. Uh, I, I will tell you this, that uh, I, I mailed out to, uh, emailed out to parents uh, the link to the school supply list, which is on our, on our website. But, uh, but basically I just said, maybe just think about waiting a little bit until you get news from your teacher. Because sometimes we build these lists 
for the whole grade. And for the whole fourth grade, we put all these things down. And then maybe the teacher that your child has says, ah, yeah, all those are good, but this is something I really emphasize. The biggest emphasis for this year is really an extra set of earbuds or earphones, headphones to kind of have, because there will be times in class of where they might be being taught and shown like how to do something on the computer, and then all of a sudden pop your headphones on so that uh, the teacher can walk around and make sure they're doing what they need to do and understanding how to get to some of this. Because again, there's gonna be days where they're going to be home and remote learning that they need to kind of understand how to do it. So, so that's number one. The number two thing is, is that we'll have a spot in the classroom for uh, materials so that kids don't have to be trucking it back and forth each day. They will be taking home their Chromebook and then they'll take home the charger that first day or have it home. But the most important thing for our kids, and this is gonna be something that we're gonna stress unbelievably so, is to make sure that their Chromebook is charged in the morning when they come into school because it's gonna be, they're gonna be here for seven hours, so hopefully it's charged. They're not gonna be using it for seven hours while they're here, but at least make sure that they have it charged and they have it here. So those, um, those lists of supplies are on our website. If you go and I can, again, share my screen um, and kind of show you where we are. Here. And, and while you're doing that, I, I, I think it's important to have an extra mask in your child's backpack. Um, if, if someone forgets a mask, that's not a problem. We have masks in school that we can give out, but I know I have forgotten my mask places and, and I always leave extra in my car, but I leave the paper masks and I prefer to wear, wear the cloth mask. And I know some people like to match their outfit and look <laughs> really stylish. So, um, I, you know, I just think it's important. But again, if, if someone forgets a mask, we do have plenty of masks, so it wouldn't be a big deal. If you see what I just clicked on, I clicked on the Norton Public Schools website and the bus routes just popped up. So if that might be a question for some of you, the bus routes were just made available. So that is there for you. Um, if you go to our school, the Henry AL, and there's the bus routes again. And then you go to students and families and, wait a second. Oh. Classes. It was their school supplies list. It's, it was there. Yep. I even have my son. I even have my glasses on, and I still can't see it. Um, was it under student and families? Yeah, yes, there it is. Yep. There it is. There it is, right there. And there's the bus list again. <laughs> and there's the supply list for fourth grade and for fifth grade. Um, and there's all the helpful stuff right there. So again, if you go back, and it's at the school students and families, supply lists, and then right there in the middle, school supply lists. All right. Um, all right, we wanna get to- Sure, the is the minimum in person to attend Norton Elementary two days per week? So, yeah, our hybrid model is um, two days a week. Um, we, we have and then three days of uh, remote learning. So it's either a Tuesday, Thursday, which is cohort one, or Wednesday, Friday, which is cohort two. And there's also a question, and I don't, I'm not sure about this one. How to know purple or white group of cohort one? That would be for the middle school. Okay. Uh, we, we are, we are just, we are just one, one, two. one and two. And, um, and as Mr. Balau has said, the Monday, the Monday is remote and it's kind of like a half day schedule where our teachers will be working on a half day schedule with the kids. And then the, and then the end of their day, 
will be students are kind of sent on their way to do something. They'll, they'll do some morning meetings with, with the teachers and talk about things and mostly talk about the upcoming week and really build up. This is what we're going to be doing for, the, for this week and then kind of sending them on their way. And then the second half of the day, teachers will be doing professional development to, again, make sure that this remote side of the, of the ledger is as best as it can be. Um, Mr. Gagan, this next one has your name written all over it. My son is starting remotely fifth grade and I haven't received any info on his teachers or where to start on Wednesday, just curious. And I'm giving this to you. If you don't know watching, Mr. Gagan is the remote school principal. I, I, I am. I am the Yale principal and I'm wearing two hats. And I'm also the remote principal for the district. Tomorrow night, there is a Zoom meeting. And again, um, just like for even the hybrid uh, students and parents and families, uh, the, the remote side of the house, we've been really building in the last couple weeks. I, I did not get this position until last week and uh, been trying to hire all the teachers for the remote side. I can tell you that the remote teacher that we have for our remote students is an excellent teacher and we will be having a Zoom meeting tomorrow night with, uh, with families and if you did not get that, please just shoot me an email and I can, uh, I can get you that information for the Zoom meeting tomorrow for just full remote. Um, it, it has been a very, very busy time uh, to, to try to get all of this together for everybody. Um, but uh, again, remote families, it, one thing you need to understand, and it will be something that will be said tomorrow night in the Zoom meeting, but we also have students penciled in to a certain homeroom. So if all of a sudden the whole district goes remote and, uh, and we are now all fully remote like we were in March and the whole district goes remote, your children that are just strictly right now parent choice remote will just bump right into those classrooms. So we did put pencil them into a homeroom. They have a teacher here and uh, they will then slide right in. And we want to make sure that our remote teacher is working closely with the curriculum that is being done in both fourth grade and fifth grade for our hybrid learners. And uh, so just kind of know and understand that, that I will be stressing that tomorrow, but I at least wanted to make sure I, I said that. Um, will there be a time for parents to meet our kids' teachers? For hybrid? It doesn't say. See, we, again, because everything has been so hard to get information to you, because we've just been struggling and to balance everything and make sure we put the kids in the right hybrid, hybrid classes in the right cohorts, keep everything consistent and keep uh, even the numbers kind of similar, that if all of a sudden one class had four kids that were just straight up remote, and uh, we had 10 kids in this class going cohort one and then 11 kids doing cohort two. We wanted to make everything keep consistent. So it's been taking us a long time to just get that information to you. So that information was mailed to you last Friday. You should have the name of your homeroom teacher. They should have um, at this point sent you an email. And if not, then you probably are getting one tomorrow from your homeroom teacher and uh, it, it might have included slides or it might end up being a Zoom meeting or a Google Meet maybe tomorrow. So, uh, so that would be what I would look out for. And especially if your kids are starting on Wednesday, they might end up for Wednesday, if they're, if they're remote on Wednesday, they're probably getting some type of assignment that is, that is kind of getting to know you and just trying to talk about who you are as a learner. So, so your fourth and fifth grade teacher kind of get to know you. And then when you come in face to face on, on Thursday, there's a little bit of work that you did Wednesday at home that now they're doing. And, and then we're gonna continue that cycle every, every week 
where Tuesday and Thursday you're here in person and then Wednesday and Friday you're at home and with the remote day for everyone on Monday and the opposite for others. So my guess is that you're probably getting an email or your child might have gotten an email through their, through their Google Classroom and through their email. And for those that are in fourth grade, maybe they're, they didn't remember it or maybe they don't know what it is. And if you just shoot us an email or Miss Susie Kabat, who is our, our, our computer teacher, uh, we can certainly help out your kids. So this is one of those helpful things that I'm glad we're having this meeting before the first day so that these are things that you can kind of get in touch with us. Uh, so the remote days of the hybrid model, um, someone asked the question how it's going to look. And in general terms, um, you know, because it's going to look different probably teacher to teacher, but generally, uh, you know, students will have independent assignments to work on, project-based learning. Um, they could be, let's say, if a student is in the Wednesday, is the in the Wednesday Friday cohort, Thursday could be, you know, so, some follow-up of of what would, you know, some enrichment of what uh, or you know what was done on Wednesday or taking something to the next step. Um, the teachers will have um, a pre-recorded video uh, for math. ELA science, whatever is going to be worked on that day. Um, and it's going to say something like, this is what we did on Wednesday. Um, and, and, you know, this is how we did it. We're going to take the next step here going forward, uh, you know, today. So this is what you're going to work on. So something like that. So there'll be pre-recorded videos, project-based learning, independent assignments. And again, I'm just speaking in general terms because every teacher may do it a little bit differently. Um, right. And how is attendance going to be taken? We're working on that right now. We are definitely working on that, and it will probably be something along the lines uh, in in a format of a like a Google form that the kids will have to kind of fill out. And we will we we are expecting them that our day starts at eight twenty five for live. That the teachers are building a schedule for them on the days that they're not here. That the students are at home, that their day starts at 825. Because again, we all hope and pray that eventually we will all be back in person. So we want to get the kids back to being into this routine of that the day starts at 825. And uh, it might be for those days that they're remote, maybe they're just getting up, logging on, answering the attendance question, then maybe scooting off, brushing their teeth, eating some, eating some breakfast, and then getting their self going for the day. But uh, it really is something that, that we want to start building back into the kids, the routine. Um, in terms of someone that doesn't have a, a teacher right now, just shoot me an email or call the main office tomorrow morning and we can make sure what happened. We might have the wrong address for you because those were mailed, snail mail to you, but, uh, but just shoot us an email or, or give us a call in the morning and we can easily look it up and figure out why you might not have uh, gotten that information. Uh, for the kids that are here four days a week, those are our high need students. Um, that is, the way we built it is that they're getting the support that they need. Um, so they are they're getting all the, the minutes and hours that they are supposed to be getting supported work and supported uh, time with teachers and with uh, maybe even their uh, counselor or some outside therapists and things like that, or speech therapists. Uh, reading specialists, they're getting that time so that we make sure that they fit it in. And I think the four-day schedule for them is going to work out great for them to make sure we help them succeed as much as possible and, and, and get all the time that they, that they are. So there'll be time in the regular classroom on those, on those days, and then there's going to be times when they are, when they are at their pullout. If your teacher assignment included one teacher, that means that there is no switch teacher, exactly. If all of a sudden you were fourth or fifth grade and you are listed one teacher, it is that you have one teacher. And in the fourth grade, that is Mrs. Troutman, Mrs. Fatera, um, Miss Allen, and Mrs. Benson. 
those four teachers are all self-contained and they teach both subjects. Uh, Ms. Horton, Mrs. Gray, they share. Ms. Horton is on the ELA side. Mrs. Gray is on the math and science side. And uh, if you got Mrs. Gordon and, or Miss Marceau, <clears throat> Mrs. Mrs. Gordon, I got it right. Mrs. Gordon was on the ELA side, and Miss Marceau is on the math and science side. Mr. Blau, you want to say the fifth grade because I can't speak for it. Sure. And Mrs. Mrs. Gordon was Miss Leonard, um, so she was married over the summer. So fifth grade, um, we have Mrs. Almeida <clears throat> and Mrs. Mallon who are a team. Mrs. Almeida is the math. Mrs. Mallon's ELA. Um, we have Mrs. Bruno, Mrs. Donahue, who are a team. Mrs. Donahue is the math science. Mrs. Donahue is ELA. We have Mrs. Winters and Mrs. Carrera, who are a team. Mrs. Winters is the math and science. Mrs. Carrera is ELA. And then two self-contained fifth grade classes. One is Ms. Quigley and the other is Mrs. Carline. Uh, will the students be able to use the playground? They will be able to run around, but the structure itself, they will not be able to use. Um, that is in the guidance by the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So uh, sadly, the kids won't be able to use the slides or the swings or the play space, but, they, but we will have them be able to run around and be able to get some fresh air. Uh, the remote scheduled days, um, the teachers are working on all that and we'll be able to kind of get that to you. Um, oh, you're very welcome for all your effort. Thank you so much. Uh, the, the, the teachers are, should be getting that to kids. And I know that some of them are set up for some gold, Google Meets for tomorrow. Um, so I, I'm sure that you will. And again, these first few days are going to be really just kind of getting to know you, getting to figure out, and getting you back into this school frame of mind. It's been so long. And uh, even though it looks very similar, sort of, to March, it's not. And we want it to look way more closely to what we had before March, even with just the three remote days and the two in-person days to what it was in person prior to March. So we're really going to try to get that back as much as and I don't know if, if this was answered or it was later because I've been trying to go through the questions. Um, someone asked about flexibility with the remote days and assignments. Yes, there's definitely going to be flexibility. We understand that they're working parents and it's difficult at home and um, th there will be flexibility um, with certain things. And if that's an issue, you know, um, just reach out to the classroom teacher because um, we understand there's a lot going on at home. I mean, I have three boys who today was their first day working remotely at home, so we all get it. We, we, we totally understand. Will the students who are working at home have a specialist on those days? Those will be the teachers uh, that are their homeroom teachers. We'll definitely be checking in with them. And then in terms of specialists, let's say they work with a counselor or something like that, those at home days, that's when we're gonna try to work with them as much as possible. And then specialists, we have our specialists building some type of online remote classes that kids can take. So if all of a sudden your kids are kind of, need something to do on a Tuesday, Thursday when they're home, there will be classes like uh, recorded classes of PE, recorded classes of technology, recorded classes of, of art that maybe they will be able to kind of do and uh, expand their learning that way. Will there be hot lunch? There will be. There, uh, the, I know that the, the food services just sent something out to you um, that kind of explains it. And uh, we're going to be going over all those things in those first couple days with them. But yes, there will be hot lunch choices, cold lunch choices. I think they've narrowed it down to two. So it's not right. the on a smorgasbord that kids could kind of choose, pick and choose. It's more, here's your you're either A or B, hot or cold, and then we go from there. And, and just so you know, um, that the, the kids will not be waiting in line to receive a lunch. They're going to they're gonna go into the cafeteria. We have desks instead of tables. It was easy to, 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 to socially distance the kids. And the lunch will be brought to them 
by um, one of the cafeteria workers. So everything we were brought to them, um, I know the cold lunch will be in a bag. I, I, I'm not sure about the hot lunch, but it, it will be brought to them, the food. Um, My daughter was saving all her hashtags last year. That is awesome. And yeah. came home with a bag full of them. Will they still use hashtags this coming year? And can she carry them over? She can carry them Absolutely, over. Absolutely, she can carry them over. We love that. Um, that will be awesome. And uh, we are doing something where we are kind of contemplating how we're setting up hashtags. We are using Class Dojo, and many of you, your teacher, if you checked out the slideshow that was in uh, my newsletter last week, um, you will see that uh, that the that Class Dojo ended up becoming uh, one of the things that uh, that we are doing, and uh, I wanted to pull up for everybody that uh, this is the newsletter that I email home each week. And as you see, that there were 312 visitors this past week. I love that. Um, keep that up. It's great. Again, it answers a lot of questions for you um, that you have. And again, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us or give us a call in the main office. Eight to three is usually when uh, Mrs. Parlon's here, though a lot of times she's here earlier than that. And a lot of times she stays a lot later than that. But Mr. Blau and I are in the office. But I usually have have the calendar in here of upcoming events. Um, if you see there, we're asking the kids to wear purple and white to show their Norton and Yale pride to start the school year. Uh, here were the Zoom meetings for today. And then tonight, there's the technology one later tonight. And then on Tuesday, for those in the Remote Learning Academy, um, that one. Um, and then these were the slideshows. And fourth grade put together a wonderful slideshow that introduces all the teachers and faculty and staff and some of the things that you'll hit on in your academics. And then the fifth grade as well. And both of them kind of highlight uh, Class Dojo. This is Nurse Jenny and uh, she is phenomenal. And if you ever have any questions uh, about medications or anything, she really is incredible. And she put in a lot of information here and she usually gives me information every single week to kind of put in here for all families just to kind of know um, and see. Um, and then I and Mr. Balawa, the favorite part of our job is getting in to classrooms and seeing the kids doing the learning that they're doing. And we know it's gonna be different this year. We know we're all gonna be different and it's gonna not be so much high fives or, or bumps, fist bumps. It's really gonna be air high fives and air fist bumps and air elbows. But uh, for us, it, it is being in those classrooms and seeing the phenomenal job that our teachers do and how they work with, with your children as best as they possibly can. And I tweet that out. And I usually, in this section, just kind of take show pictures from the Twitter that uh, everything is hashtagged Hey Nation, and it's at hey, hey School Norton. If you follow us on Twitter, you can follow that along. And I usually try to put a lot of news in there. And I also put a lot of pictures of the things that we try to do. So that's something for you to kind of check out and, and see. But, um, but that is something I email back every single week. All right. Band clarinet for this year. Is it safe to assume there won't be classes this year? So Dr. Bianca, we are trying to do uh, band through his remote days. So, so not his remote days, the kids' remote days. So if the kids were in cohort one and they're here on Tuesday, Thursday, on Wednesday and Friday, Dr. Bianca is going to try to do some Zoom meetings with the kids to kind of help and support them through because we don't want the music program to, to lapse in any way here in the district. It's a phenomenal music program, high school all the way down. And Dr. Bianca does a 
magnificent job with the kids. So, um, so that is something we will be sending more information out to you. And uh, Dr. Bianca is going to try to uh, get around to the kids and explain to the kids that if they were in band last year, this is how we're continuing it. So that then he can meet with them like I said, if they're here in person Tuesday, Thursday, then they'll be Wednesday, Friday at, at home, and they might be able to then blow their clarinet in, their, in the safety of their own home, where they cannot do it here in school. So uh, that will be how he will continue the band going, and it's going to be awesome. Um, will the fourth graders have lockers? Uh, no. we. This is again guidance from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that uh, that they that we cannot use the lockers. Um, so when they bring in their stuff with a backpack, they're just going to hang it from from their chair, and uh, that shouldn't be a problem because, as we said, the classrooms are half as full. So and there's a lot of space between each desk and in each chair. Um, the yoga mats, the kids were, it, some teachers were saying it might be great when they go outside. And we're going to try to do as much things outside as humanly possible because when you're outside, you can space yourself out and you might even be able to lower down your mask. So if all of a sudden they're outside, it just would be a, a place to sit. If you don't have a yoga mat, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. We're trying to get some extras so that each kid would have one assigned to them and then uh, and have that. But uh, but we are trying to be as best as possible. What time for lunches? So our fourth grade lunch, Mr. Blau, I never remember this exact time. Um, <laughs> uh, me neither, but I believe it's 1125 to 1155. It's a 30 minute lunch. Uh, the kids will um, sanitize, wash their hands, or you uh, or, um, you sanitize it, then go out uh, for recess uh, until 12.15. Uh, the fifth grade lunches, 12.10 to 12.40. The kids will wash their hands or san use hand sanitizer after lunch to go to recess for 12.40 to 1 o'clock. Um. Can we speak a little bit more about specials? Will there be physical education and will they be leaving their classrooms for all specials? We hope as the weather cooperates that we can have PE outside. I know art is looking forward to have out, outside uh, technology, computer class with Ms. Cashton and music class with Dr. Bianca. He's looking to push into the classrooms so that the kids would stay in the classroom and they would travel on a cart and come to them but we are trying our best to have them be outside. Um, and then, uh, and then they, they will be, yes, I think this question was for the lunch, but uh, always six feet apart, always at least six feet apart um, is where they will be. Uh, so if all of a sudden it's a day, uh, like the kids have physical education and it's a raining day or it's snowing or it's super cold, then uh, Miss Crane will be going over wellness and health and wellness with them. So she would then be working inside the classrooms with them. So the fully remote learning, that's something that Mr. Gagan is gonna have um, his Zoom session on tomorrow. But there's also in that question is about cohorts. So if it's not, if it's the hybrid, so if, if you're talking of the hybrid model in you're a cohort, um, one, it's a Tuesday, Thursday. So on, on Wednesday and Friday, when you're home during that remote time, classes will not be streamed. Um, like I said, there'll be a, a pre-recorded video by teachers. Teachers will also have um, uh, office hours uh, for 30 minutes that um, kids can pop in, ask questions, or um, you know, if they just want to talk to the teacher, they are more than welcome to do that. Um, office hours will be different for every teacher, so you're just going to have to uh, check in with them. I'm sure they'll be posted uh, in Google Classroom. Um, and, and then will they be able to ask questions during these sessions while their peers are in the classrooms? It's mostly, like you just said, Ms. Blau, it's going to be like after school hours and things like that that they will answer it. Um, so if they shoot an email or they have like on their Google Classroom spots for teachers, teachers might be building different areas that they say, put your questions in here, they will then get to them as quickly as they can. Uh, so that J Jamie Devin was just asking, 
this is the one who did not have a teacher. Um, so it's the fully remote. So the fully remote kids do not have a teacher listed yet. They don't have a teacher listed yet. We have them penciled into to a homeroom, but uh, and then the remote teacher is not someone that's teaching of the 16 teachers that Mr. Bilal and I mentioned. It's not those homeroom teachers. It is a separate teacher. So for the high school, it's separate teachers and teachers that teach at the high school, then dip different teachers that teach at the middle school and all the elementary schools. It's different teachers that, that are not the classroom teachers because as Mr. Balawa said, it's not streaming. It's a teacher of record that is outside. But again, if we all of a sudden all go back to remote, then those kids will be taken right back into, the, into their class. Uh, will siblings in the same school in different grades be able to sit together on the bus? Oh, we got that answer today. <laughs> the answer is no. And the reason why is um, when it was answered, there was a nice little picture drawn up on, on the whiteboard. But if we have two people per seat, while those two people are safe, they would be violating the others around them um, they'd be within their six feet. So that means we would have to put fewer kids on the bus. So even though in theory, it sounds great, if they actually have their own seat, we, their own spot, we can fit more kids on the bus. So long, long answer short, the answer is no. Right. And it, it, and the way we were also discussing it is that it's not really necessary because the bus numbers right now for the number of kids on a bus are even with the space, one kid per big long seat, the way where they have them kind of diagonally kind of sitting, it, it's, we have, we have, we still have openings on, on the buses. So they will be safe. If a teacher, if a child has two different teachers switching, would both teachers' names have been listed on? No, just one of them. It will just say the homeroom teacher. So if it were Horton or Gray, it would say Horton or Gray. If it was Marceau or or Gordon, it would say one of them. And then if for fifth grade, it would say either Almeida. And then they have Malin. And if it were Carrera, it would have Carrera or Winters, Donahue or Bruno. Um, so drop, drop off and pick up. Um, so I was going to type the answer, but it might be easier just to say drop off in the morning is in the front of the school door number three. And it's the gym door. And that's where um, fifth graders will go in. At the end of the day, pickup is going to be in the back of the school, door number 15. The door numbers, you're really not going to need to know what they are. It's just by the gym, first day in the front of the school. At the end of the day, back of the school, there'll be adults out there making sure that you get where you need to get. So just as long as you know front of the school morning, back, back of the school, end of the day, you'll be fine. Uh, will students in fourth grade be walking down the walkway? We will basically time it when it's raining so that they have the least amount of time that they are out in the rain, just as if last year when it was the buses, if they were walking out to the buses, right. they walk out and we try to get them as quickly to the bus. We kind of park the bus right out for them to just jump right on. So the same thing would be for car pickup or a car drop off as well as for a uh, bus pickup and bus drop off is that we keep them out of the rain as much as humanly possible. Uh, is there a list of homeroom teachers so that students know when, when they get off the bus, if they know, they should know who their homeroom teacher is and we will have plenty of people there to direct them which way to go. And there will be people manning every hallway, every stairwell so that they can point out where everyone needs to go. And as we said, this is all new. So even if that child is a little bit nervous about, I don't know where Miss Marceau's room is, no one knows out of the fourth grade where Miss Marceau's class is we will point them in the right direction as to which way to go. Should the parents stay in the cars for pickup? Yes, we yes. want the kids to go to you because we wanna make sure as soon as it is safe, we can get that line moving. And if someone is out of their car, then it would just be holding up traffic. So yes, please stay in your car um, for pickup. Um, should we call the school? Should, if you have 
the yeah. shoot, we shoot. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, you were answering the second part. Or no, no, no. Doing... I was just going to answer the next question, but if oh. you want to go for it. Uh, should we call the school if we have concerns about twins being in different classrooms? If they're in different classrooms, it is the, it's the shared teachers. And they are basically same cohort day, and they're just with the shared teachers. And we do this just to kind of keep the kids that you would get the exact same work, they would have the exact same homework, they would have everything is the same, projects due on the same day, you don't have to worry about having two sets of classes to worry about, it would be mainly, everything would be the same, the only difference would be is that they are just in two separate classroom kind of cohorts with two different sets of kids. But for the most part, they are still separate and they still have everything the same. And uh, if you want me to explain that more, just give me a call tomorrow or shoot me an email tomorrow and I can explain it. And Mr. Balawa actually is the owner of Twins. Uh, so he can also explain it from his yes. point of view. Twins who are now in 12th grade. Um, <laughs> all right, can we share these slides? Yes, yes. we will. Yeah, this, this whole thing is being shared. Um, I will, I will email it out, the Zoom meeting, like for the recording of this, and I will also share in the email the slides that Mr. Balau put together. Picking up early, what is the procedure? It's a great one. That is a great one. Um, so we usually had parents sign kids out, but we can no longer do, do the physical sign out um, so we need to make a decision, um, and I'm, I'm saying we, Mr. Gagan and I, of do we want parents outside calling the school saying, I'm here, and then we can walk the child out? I, you're nodding yes, so I, I yeah. think that'd be, if you're here, you can call the main office, and then we will walk your child out, and then we will just verify who it is, and then, then we can go right into the computer, and we can say who um, uh, signed the student out. Okay, sounds good. Uh, what happens if someone is not wearing their mask during non-mask breaks? Um, this is something that we're going to, again, Mr. Blau and I are going, we, every morning we have morning announcements and I'm gonna be recording them and sending them off to the students that are off on their remote days that day so they can see the announcements and hear all the things that we're talking about. And I send it to parents as well, to your email addresses, so you'll get them as well. And, uh, and we're really just kind of expressing the, the importance of the mask and why you have to have the mask on. And Nurse Jenny is putting together a wonderful video that explains uh, the importance of it. And, uh, and, and we will work with students and, uh, and try to explain to them the importance of, of having their mask. And uh, we will certainly work with individual students if it becomes a, a habit but we know that everyone wants to be here in school and everyone wants to be here as much as possible. So we know that no one wants to mess that up for anybody. Uh, the lunch menu usually gets posted on the uh, district website. Uh, I know that they just sent out email about, the, uh, about, about lunch uh, and I believe it in that email but I will um, triple check, and if it's not, I will add it to some Q&A A's uh, when we are done here tonight. The thumbs up, that's so funny that someone just uh, tweeted that out. What does that mean uh, on that? Uh, do you have it up on your I phone do. right there? Thumbs up means that the bus driver will give students a thumbs up when it is safe to cross the street. So if, if the driver gives the thumb up, the students can cross the street. That's what the thumbs up means. Came straight from Norton Public Schools, probably Dr. Bayetta. Right, and yeah, here is our Twitter. If you see that, I retweeted that one just to make sure, but uh, you'll go to A School Norton if you do follow Twitter, and if you don't, it's not a big deal. I give all that information out to everyone as well. I'm gonna skip over the ban one because I believe you answered that one earlier. On uh, remote days, will the kids start the day with a synchronous morning meeting? Asynchronous. <laughs> Not yeah. synchronous, but asynchronous. Something that has already been, re already been recorded. 
what will Mondays look like? Mondays, as I said, is gonna be a half day for teachers and they will start the day with live on camera with the kids and getting them rolling, talking about the week, explaining some of the things, probably reviewing some of the things and talking about uh, if you're coming in tomorrow, this is what I'm expecting. If you're not coming in until Wednesday, this is what I'm expecting. Um, headphones, are they being provided for in school? Is this true? We, we tried. And because all of this is, is now every school in the world is looking for these things that uh, we do not. So for right now, if kids could bring in a set of headphones or earbuds to plug in just in times when they might be working on something on the computer, um, that would be phenomenal uh, for them to have. And as, as Mr. Balawa said, an extra mask in their bag or an extra mask that they might keep in their, in their bin might be good. And we will always have paper masks for kids if, if they don't have them. And when they're getting on the bus, that will be actually something the bus driver would do but if they're being dropped off, they, they, we would have them. Do we have a schedule or teacher set for the kids? Um, the, each teacher, they, they've been working on their schedules and we always try to have ELA in math blocks that are a good chunk of time, whether it's an hour, hour and a half, um, so teachers get this specialist schedule, then they work around that. So yes, they will have a schedule. Um, I am sure since Wednesday is the first day of in-person learning, I am sure the schedules are pretty close to done, if not done already. But I know with a lot of moving parts, we, we've just given them the, the snack schedule um, and different things. So yes, the kids will, will definitely have a schedule. Uh, the next question was about uh, attendance at, at home. Uh, again, we're working on a system that uh, would be, and as I said, it would be something that we're still expecting to start building that routine with kids that they are getting up at around starting school at that 8.30, 8.25 time. So that is something that we're doing, but definitely the, the flexibility is in there to complete their assignments. So yes, it might be something that they get up and then they check in and then they might uh, then move on to eating breakfast and then going back to something that type of way. Okay. Um, will the remote days be structured specifics dot time with live learning? No, we answer that it's going to be asynchronous and we're, we're going to be flexible too with the kids because we understand um, flexibility is definitely going to be needed. Um, can I get oh, info from oh, I, I I got, I'm, I'm going to copy that. I already did. Already okay, did. Um, if the child's first day is remote, they will be given um, assignments to do. And as Mr. Gagan said, it's going to be, you know, how's your summer trying to get to know you kind of things, but there will, there will definitely be things for the kids who are on the hybrid schedule, but remote for the first day, they will have um, things that uh, they will be doing. Um, we answered that question. Um, the fourth or fifth grade siblings be sent out together at pickup that we're, we're we're going to call all pickups, and then, uh, and as I said, as Mr. Blawa showed, we'll be all around the back, so the kids will all be walking six feet apart and get to the cars, and then the cars will load and, and go. So, uh, so they they're going to be coming from separate exits, but uh, I'm sure they will get to the car in a timely fashion, so that kids can all leave with you at the same time um can any any point someone switch to fully remote yes and if someone's fully remote they can switch back to hybrid also right and it might take might take a couple days for us to straighten out things and get things rolling for you but uh that is part of the norton public school uh, decision to go hybrid and to have the have the parent choice fully remote is that it is there um, uh, for full remote, we have 
This is something I'll talk about more right. tomorrow, but in terms of special education students, we do have the plans to meet all the needs of all the kids. And the fully remote, what are they gonna do on Wednesday to start? Again, that's something you'll that's, answer tomorrow. We're, we're talking tomorrow. There's gonna be emails tomorrow for yep. you um, sent out. Uh, again, we are trying to make a group of just remote because it gets kind of confusing because parents that are fully remote kind of think of themselves as fully remote, but then there's the remote part to hybrid. So some parents are getting confused as to, wait a second, do I need to know the remote part because my kid's in person some days, but they're remote other days. Will there be a written schedule posted? Oh, I, okay because Dr. Bayetta sent out that draft of the PowerPoint of, of the schedule. Um, so in hybrid in-person days, yes, there will be a specific schedule of what kids will do. Um, and in the, the, on, on the Monday remote days, yes, there'll be uh, um, synchronous learning going on and there'll be specific in the morning and there'll be specific, a, a, a schedule on the remote days, not, not as much specific because of flexibility. And as Mr. Gagan said, there'll be opportunities for specials in uh, things like that. So at this point, I don't think we would have a specific written one, but there'd be times that the teachers are gonna ask the kids to go on that you need to see the, um, the asynchronous lesson and I have time. seen I have seen Mr. Blau some teachers schedules for okay. the remote days and, and it does look like they kind of say during this time you should okay. be working Sorry. on your freckle you would be working on ST math you would be working on to get get yourself a mu uh, a movement break take a movement break do those things so so some of them are there and and that will be okay. th those will be out there for you we, we talked about the, uh, the mass breaks, and again, we are, we are doing the set mass breaks. In terms of unauthorized mass breaks, uh, we, we discussed that we will work with those individual students. Yes. The answer is no, no for lockers. No for lockers, sorry, that's uh, Desi. Um, Phys physical education classes, um, that's something that Ms. Crane is, is been working on. I mean, she has specific guidelines that she needs to follow. Um, when the kids are outside, um, I don't have the guidelines in front of me, but it's something like they a mask on if they're within six feet, no mask, 10 feet. So she's working on things. Um, and she's even trying to figure out if, if kids can, uh, if she can use certain equipment and then maybe sanitize it afterwards. Um, I know she's going to try to get these kids outside um, as often as possible. And if not, she will go into the classroom. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have more specifics, but if you, if you want specifics, just give me a call tomorrow and I can um, talk to Ms. Crane to see exactly what she has in mind. I know she's also working with, you know, the other gym teachers in the district to try to figure out, you know, what would be best for the kids. The next couple questions are about hot lunch. Kids will be able to purchase hot lunch and cold lunch, and uh, they that that will be available to them, and they'll be making those decisions. And as Mr. Balawa started the night by saying that the 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 cafeteria workers are going to each kid's going to be at their own desk, and like it's like more like seven and a half to eight feet apart that they are in the cafeteria, just all the separate desks and they will be putting down the kid's choice, whatever they make of it. And then at that point, everyone will be told to take off their mask and they may then eat. And then we'll have kids put their mask back on, do cleanup, head outside for recess, and then we will sanitize the whole thing for the next group to come in. Uh, will the kids have homework? They will have homework per se in, in, in the sense that there'll be stuff for them to do on the days that they're not here. So, uh, so if they're here Tuesday, Thursday in person, there will be work for them to do on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and the opposite for the other group. So they will be working there. Uh, fourth grade Chromebook problem, just give me a call tomorrow, call the main office. 
um, because I know there was another parent who had an issue and it was a simple, we just swapped the chargers out and that fixed the problem. And I don't know what the specific problem is, but start with us and, and maybe we can, Mrs. Cashton, our computer teacher can help out. And if not, we can um, let the tech department know that there's an issue. Right. Um, clarinet, we are paying paying every month for a clarinet. And I think we have a plan. We did say that uh, we're going to be working with uh, Dr. Bianca, that uh, students that are, say, cohort one and will be here on Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, he's going to try to incorporate uh, times that would work within the kids' schedules to kind of be with certain instruments and, and have band going and making sure that band works. Uh, you were unable to connect to Class Dojo, get in touch with that uh, homeroom teacher, and that homeroom teacher will have the best way to kind of get you in there. Uh, if you live close to school, can a parent walk to pick up the kid from the back? Yes, yep. definitely. And, and, yeah. I, and, and thank you for, it'd be great if a parent could come because it's gonna be a high traffic area, so it would be best if, if an adult could um, be there with, um, with, with the child. Um, with a mask, correct. With a mask. With a mask. Yep, yes. we are kind of a mask environment everywhere. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah I, I think yeah, why not? box tops, uh, we did get a couple over the summer. We yeah. just got to put them in the uh, PTO box, uh, so that would be fine. 810 is the time to drop off. 810 is the start of drop off, and kids should be here by 825. Um, but as we said, uh, those are things that, uh, that we're going to grow with here as we learn those first couple days with the construction outside and just everything that we're, we're dealing with. Mrs. Mellon is a switch teacher. She switches with Mrs. Almeida. And um, can the students bring a snack? Yes. So every classroom has a scheduled snack time. And the reason it's scheduled, that's in case they have to have snack inside because it's inclement weather. But I have also told the teachers that they don't have to strictly go by that schedule if they're going outside to take a mask break. It's only on the on the given a time in case we can't have every single student in the cafeteria at the same time. So yes, it's a 15 minute break. They can have this snack. Yes, they can bring water bottles. And there is a um, specific way that the students are going to have to take their masks off to take drinks from the water bottle. And I know Nurse Jenny is going to be putting a, a video together, sharing with the teachers of letting the kids know how they need to take their masks off so they don't contaminate their masks. Uh, recess is definitely going to be different than recesses in the past, that uh, there aren't going to be games using equipment, there aren't going to be contact games, it's going to be a whole lot different, it's really going to be kind of creating games that uh, kids can kind of play, be at a distance from one another. Student in fourth grade be allowed to walk home. Um, that it, I always get confused because K to JCS and LG have a different policy. Um, call me tomorrow and I will look it up. I, I, I I'm almost positive. The answer is yes, but I don't want to misspeak because I, I always get confused with the, the JCS and LG protocol. Um, so yeah, just give me a call tomorrow. Uh, if a student needs to leave early, uh, just give us a call. Let us know in the morning that they're going to be picked up at a certain time. And then when you're outside, you just need to give us a call and we will walk your child out. And uh, that will probably be how it will be just to kind of make it as contactless as possible. ELA, I'm so sorry that I probably have said that and I've said it a thousand times and I'm uh, very apologetic that, uh, that I need to spell it out, that uh, English language arts, and, and we usually have teachers on one side of the, like if it's switch teachers, the one teacher would be English language arts, which would be reading, writing, and kind of social studies, and wrapping that in together. How about food delivery? How is that going to happen? Um, as we said, that the, the kids are going to be at, the t at their desks, and the uh, and the 
and the kitchen workers are going to bring the lunches to them. Uh, so with a napkin and condiments and things like that, so they don't ever have to really get up uh, from where they are. And um, and and in terms of uh, kids that need extra meals, I, I know in that uh, food services email that went out today, it kind of explains more about how we are doing that. So if you look through that, you'll see it. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, the thumbs up, that was the, that the bus driver will give the thumbs up uh, from the child to make sure that they, when they get off the bus and it's safe for them to walk across. Uh, cohort one kids, what are they doing on Wednesday? Um, it, it's going to be a lot of, like we said earlier, SEL stuff. You know, what did, what did you do over the summer? You know, um, what are two or three things that you want to share with your classmates, with the teacher? Things like that. Um, it's going to be specific. The, the classroom teacher may be doing something different than another classroom teacher, so I don't want to get into specifics, but it's just going to be nothing really academic, just how was your summer and getting to know students is, is really gonna be the main things that the kids will be doing on Wednesday. And even in school too, it's gonna be, let, let's get to know these kids. It's been, as Mr. Gagan said, about seven months since we've had kids. So um, we wanna get to know these kids really well before we get into the nitty gritty of the academics. Uh, do kids bring the yoga mats back and forth to school? I, I think the classrooms that have talked about it are, are finding a spot in the classroom that would be for them. So they would just bring it once, leave it here with their name on it, and it would be only touched by them. Um, the, the work that will be online is something through Google Classroom. A lot of, well, no, all of our, all of our classroom teachers use use Google Classroom and a lot of the assignments will be through that. So they might be filling out Google documents, they might be working on Google Slides, they might be sharing it with their teacher and getting feedback from their teacher that way. So a lot of things are, are different and it's, and it's a change and, uh, and we at the L fourth grade and fifth grade, it might be a little bit different than third grade that they experienced where, where we have been a Google Classroom school for a while now. So this is something that we we kind of work with the kids on. Um, well, thank you. Thank you yes. for all your patience, because uh, that's what this is all about, working here with, with us trying to figure it out uh, as we build the airplane, as we are flying it. Will we have MCAS? As of right now, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education says yes, but we will certainly see come March, whether we will or not. Um, if an incoming Fourth grader is fully remote. Will they be able to join band, learn an instrument through Hey? I can guarantee you that uh, that Dr. Bianca wants to keep that band as robust as possible. Uh, will Wednesday be live? Uh, Wednesday will be live for those kids that are in person, so cohort two students. Cohort one students, it would be something that would be recorded and for them to do and as uh, Mr. Balau has said there's a lot of different things that the teachers have gotten planned. And to be honest, it's not just the first day, it's going to be the first like four or five days of really getting to know you types of things. And just really working everyone back into this routine of what it should look like in person and what it's going to look like at home. So the only tough part about that is someone had to have the first day and it's sad that it's cohort one, but cohort one's the lucky ones that kind of rolled that dice and have that, that they're experiencing remote at home learning that first day. But, uh, but the kids that are in cohort two and are here live that first Wednesday, they're going to get a little bit more of a, of a background of what they need to do. There will be that video for the kids in cohort one, but I know it's not the same and I know it's hard and we're doing our best. And these have been some of the things we've been trying to think about for the last few weeks as to how do we make this work? How do we make this as successful as possible? And, and that first day is gonna be difficult and tough. And then all of a sudden we'll roll into the second day and we'll get things really going. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't lose sleep 
over over Wednesday if your child's in cohort one. We'll get there, we'll get them something, we'll make sure that it works out, and it might look a little bit different for your child on Friday than it did on that Wednesday, just because they didn't get a chance to meet face-to-face, -face. and we all fully understand that, but we're trying to get to the 180 days and make sure we have those 180 days for kids and that they're learning. Um, so will there be a para provided at meal times for a special needs students? So I, I, when I made the lunch lunch schedule, I met with the special needs teachers, the special education teachers. I met with um, Mrs. Hasselbacker, who is our chairperson, who um, knows all the, the special ed kids and their needs. And anyone who needs any student who needs someone, um, a paraprofessional to help, that student will have a paraprofessional to help. And also, we'll be talking to the general population, everybody, about how to properly take off a mask and how to properly put it on the desk to make sure that it, as few germs get on it as possible, you know, to take it off correctly and, and, and to put it a certain way. Um, so we'll be talking to everybody. Yes, if a student needs a paraprofessional, they will have a paraprofessional there for them. And then the next question was lunch as well. Are students allowed to bring lunch from home? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are kids, I mean, my own, my own two kids, one's a senior and one just graduated from high school. He never once bought lunch ever. So, uh, so yes, you are definitely allowed to bring your own lunch. We do have peanut free classrooms. And we did say that uh, we're, we're peanut free classrooms throughout the school. So that includes snacks, so peanut free snacks. But at lunch, we do have the peanut free kids separate in the lunchroom. They're in the lunchroom, but they're separate from those kids that might be eating uh, something that might include peanuts. What will recess be like in the rainy and cold months? Well, anytime we have recess and it's too cold to go out or rainy, we have indoor recess in the classrooms. So it's not going to change the students who are in their their home room um the whether it's eight nine ten how many how many ever there are they will have recess in that room they will have to wear their mask and they will have to socially distance in the classroom i mean it's not the the answer i want to give but at, at this point that's that's what we have that's why i am fingers crossed it's going to be sunny and warm um and we can get outside as much as we possibly can but Mr. Palawa, you should tell them that you, what's your threshold for bringing them outside so that they know to wear coats and hats and gloves. So the threshold we have is a feel like temperature of 25 degrees. So if, it, if it's 25 or higher, we will go outside. And that's the feel like temperature, the wind chill, because we have kids who will say it's cold, but we wanna get the kids out as much as possible. So yes, if it's cold and there's any question, make sure the kids are dressed warm. Um, what time does school end? We call parent pickups at 2.40. So that's when we start to release kids uh, outside the building. And then I know someone typed in the technology meeting that was starting five minutes ago is throughout the whole district. And it's just with the technology meeting or with the technology department. If anyone had questions, I'm sorry that we've gone over. We will stay here, but we're not done yet. But I'm just saying that if you did want to go to the technology meeting, it is for the whole district. It's not just for the yell. It's for the whole district in case anyone had questions uh, about uh, Internet. Um, capability in their house or it, that things that they might not have a good Wi-Fi. Uh, these are questions that go to Mrs. Winsper and our phenomenal tech department. Um, and again, if any questions come up at any time, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, please don't hesitate to give us a call here in the main office or, or shoot Mr. Balawa or me an email and we will we try to answer it as quickly as we can. Um, and uh, we, we, what about families that have to pick up one child at the L and then have to get to the middle school? Um, we, we've had that m for many years here. And, and basically you pick up here and then you drive over there and you should be fine time-wise uh, to pick them up. Um, again, we, we do our best. We're, we're all working together to make sure that, uh, that the construction outside 
uh, kind of accommodates us as best as we can. Is there anything we can do to help out the teachers, all of you supplies? Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, we're doing well. We, we are yeah. doing okay. Um, we, we, we keep, uh, we keep trucking on and, and I know that, uh, the teachers here are some of the most phenomenal teachers I've ever had the pleasure of work with. Um, they are incredible. And as I started the night by saying, we are all here, um, for the very purpose of, of caring for your kids and making sure that they have the best experience they can have in those short two years that they're here with us. Um, uh, it's something that uh, when I was hired a couple of years ago, uh, I, I didn't want it to be just the stopover between the JCS, LGN, and the middle school. We wanted it to be a special experience for, for these kids and make sure that it is. And it's something that we strive to do every single day. And this year is gonna be a little bit special, but we're gonna make it as special as possible for them and make sure that they enjoy this as much as they can. Our job here is to make your kids love school and that's what we're gonna to try to do. Um, so that's our job and that's what we're hoping to be able to accomplish. And I just wanna add one thing. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please reach out. We are here for you. Um, if, if, like I said, if there's anything that is bothering you, concerning you, we are here to help. Let us know. We will try to fix it. And, uh, and like Mr. Gagan said, we want the kids to love learning. So that, that's our goal. And as Mr. Bilal has mentioned a couple times, there might be things that we thought were going to work out phenomenally. And we're realizing we need to tweak that a little bit. We need to change that a little bit. And that's what we'll do. Um, that uh, we started this night by talking about how it's going to look a whole lot different than emergency at home learning, distant learning that went on from March through June. It is going to look different. I think that's something that we're going to try to build into the kids and explain that uh, that March through June was something that we just had to kind of fall into and figure it out. I thought we did a phenomenal job, but this is going to be different and we're going to try to make it as close to humanly possible as something as if we were going to school regularly five days a week here in person, class sizes of 22, 23, 24, and everyone just moving on with their days. We're, we're going to try to make that as much as possible. All right, Mr. Balawa. That's it. All right. All right. We well, will thank have you, this. Everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your Monday. Thank you for being patient with us. Um, again, any questions that still linger out there, please just shoot us an email, give us a call, and we will try to answer them as quickly as possible. Um, but, uh, but thank you so much, and we're off to a great year. We know it. Have a great night.